And so in Romans 1, 18 to 23, uh, it's, a, you know, it's a few verses, so if you have your Bibles, turn to that. Romans chapter 1, 18 to 23. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. In the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God, or give thanks to him. They became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened, claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchange the glory of the mortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and human things. But ingratitude is a sin with severe consequences. You see, again, in this passage, it clearly details, you know, and describes a downfall of a person. Right? Not just a non-believer, but even the believers who start to move away from God. See, our focus, you know, or we're going to focus on the entirety of the, 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 the passage, but in verse 21 and onwards, we're going to take a little bit more look into that as well. In verse 21, it reads, what? For although they knew God, they knew God, it says. Who is they? Who is they? If you look back up to the top in verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. So they are those who are ungodly and unrighteous. Right? Ungodly. Ungodly is those who are trying to move away from God, right? Unrighteous, those who suppress the truth, they are those who do God, but not in a saving sense, but they knew of His existence and His attributes. So ungodly, unrighteous, that's who they're talking about. In Galatians 5, 19 to 21, it says, now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, Strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Once more, but they are those who are ungodly and unrighteous. And that's just a description of what that looks like. Colossians 3, 5, 6, similarly, it says, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these wrath, the wrath of God is coming. Again, ungodly, unrighteous. Second Timothy 3, 1 to 5. Second Timothy 3, 1 to 5. It says, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, Landless, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Do you see how serious ungratefulness is? You see, you, you look at that last passage that we read in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, all of those things that we were talking about, uh, people's lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents. In the middle of that, right after that, what does it say? Ungrateful. For people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Ungrateful. And then after it says, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving, good, treacherous, da 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 In the middle of that batch of things that are pretty bad, is being ungrateful. Who would have thought that you would squish in the middle of all that path, all those things, the word ungrateful? And the reason why is because it's serious, right? The lack of gratitude in our lives for God is a serious event. It's a serious thing. There's consequences behind not being grateful for what God has done because it shows that we don't give reverence to Him, we don't give Him the credit. So essentially, when you don't give credit to where it's due, you say it doesn't exist, right? If you don't say thank you to somebody, you don't you don't acknowledge what they've done for you. If 
if you're not grateful for your parents or what they've done for you, you're essentially like, well, I don't care what you've done for me. I don't really care what you do for me. I don't care the job that you have. I don't care that you provide for me. I'm not really grateful for you. So essentially you're saying, you know, I got this. This is all me. This is what I do. Right? And so when we say that to God and we say, you know what, I don't, you know, I'm not going to show you my great gratitude and I'm not going to show you thanks. Essentially saying, you know what, I don't think you exist. I don't care what you do for me. And that's a serious offense. To say that God isn't there for you, that he doesn't exist, that he doesn't do what he does and provide for you each and every day, that's a serious offense. And so he puts that in the middle there, and Paul is talking to Timothy, says this is what's going to happen. And when you read that passage, it's crazy because as I read that, I'm thinking, this is today. This is the life of today. This is what we see in all people today. People who are lovers of self. You know, social media these days is the biggest thing. Right? All of us here have either Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and all that kind of stuff. For all of those social media types of things, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, I see a camera right in front of me. You know, back in the day, that's what you had, a camera, a physical camera. Like, not a phone, but a camera. You know, perhaps in that time, it wasn't even digital. It was, you know, you click, you put film in there, you have to get it developed, you go to a photo place, get that developed, they put all the negatives and stuff. Back in the day, you don't see people putting up tripods, putting a camera, and taking pictures of themselves. Right? You set up a tripod to take pictures of what? Everybody else. Right? These days, social media is what? Pictures of yourself. Right? You don't see people, you see yourself. It's a selfie. Right? You're literally doing this, eating an ice cream. Right? Look what I am. I, you know, I'm eating a chocolate ice cream. It's so good. It's summertime. Look at the day, and you know, always, you know, it's like that. Right? And that's sort of lovers of self, right? Because you know what? How many times that picture's going to be taken? Maybe five times. Because the, the, the lighting wasn't right, so you move it over, the shadow, you know what I mean? And that's what it is, right? And it's crazy. You laugh because it's true. All of us do it. It's the culture today. It's a selfie culture. It's all about yourself, right? And so as I read this, I'm thinking, man, this is today. Did Paul, is Paul here today? Is he writing this because he sees what's happening in this life today? You know what I mean? But this was back then. And this is going to happen. And this is happening now. And that should scare you because it's at a point where it should sort of be more concerning for you to see that this is where life is going. Right? The fact that people are starting to forget who God is to the point that they're no longer giving credit to where it's due. And that's to God. Right? And that's serious. Right? Although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor what? Gave thanks to Him. Again, you never really think about how important giving thanks to God, but as you read these passages, you start, man, this is really serious. He's literally saying all of these things. Then he says, you have to give thanks. This tells us that God takes gratefulness and ungratefulness seriously. It's serious because when we don't show gratitude to God, our Father, our Creator, our Savior, we're basically taking away the credit that's due to Him. And like I said, it's essentially saying God doesn't exist. Not me. All of this is because of me, not because of him. Nobody's done this for me. It's all about me. I've done this for myself. If none of the praise and glory and gratitude goes to God, then where does it go? It goes to me. It goes to yourself. It goes to anything but God if we deny the existence of him. That's a sin. And the wages of sin is what? Death. Is it serious? Yes, it's serious. But like what we said before earlier, you know, it never really ends. God never leaves it at a point where it's only trouble and there's no resolution behind it. Because as we know in that passage, that it's not the end. It says, you know, it's never the final word because although the wages of sin is death, what, what, what does it say after that? It goes on to say that the gift of God is what? Eternal life in Christ Jesus. Right? He doesn't leave you to a point where you're left in trouble. He gives you a solution to find ways back to Him. Right? And that's the amazing thing about God, because God is good all the time. Right? He's always going to give you a way out. Never put you in a situation where you can't handle. He's always going to open a door for you. Right? And in this case, God has given us an open door through Jesus Christ. Right? Always. Right? And so, in verse 19, um, it says, For what can be known about God is plain to them. Again, this is in Romans. Um, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them for his invisible attributes, 
namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made so they of the doubt excuse. Now, you know, if you're here today and you don't know God, or if you're here today and you have an idea of who God might be, but have made excuses for yourself to say that God doesn't exist and say, I don't believe that God is real, I want to apologize to you because God is true. And just in this passage here, you know, you're here today because He wants you to hear this. And it says, For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. God has shown it to each one of us that God is real. For His invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. He has laid it plain to each one of us that He is real, that He exists by looking outside. Look at what's created outside. Look at the trees, look at the grass, look at the colors, look at the mountains when you go out there in the different parts of the world. Right? Nature in itself, creation in itself. Look at yourself. We're talking about babies. Right? You think about the complexity of the human body. If you work as a nurse, as a doctor, you know how complex our body works. And so for us to simply say this is all by accident, that we were merely created by for no reason without purpose, this complexity that we have is literally, literally just an accident, I can't buy that. Not for me, but some, some sort of capacity in my brain to say that God doesn't exist. I can't buy that. I can't say that it's by accident that I'm here, that I'm here for no purpose at all. So I'm going to you know, challenge you today for those of you perhaps who are saying, well, God doesn't exist. God isn't real. Read that passage because he says there is no excuse. You know, and I apologize because if you choose to live out your life in denial of God's existence, God's existence, the wages of sin, that in itself brings you to death. You know, God has made an open door for all of us. And he says, you know, whether you see me or not, look outside and you'll see that I exist. Look at yourself. Look at how babies are born, how you are here, how you function, how you see, how you walk, how you move, how you talk. That should give you an inclination that I exist. And it says here, I made a claim to you so that you have no excuse. It's difficult to ignore that someone greater was not involved in all of this. Right? I believe that it's harder for you to believe that the God doesn't exist than to, to believe that God exists. And that's just my opinion. So being ungrateful is not something to ignore because it's a sign that we are focused more on ourselves and less on God. You see, you think about it. Why give thanks to God for what we believe we develop ourselves and acquire for ourselves? No reason, right? Why thank God if we believe that everything that we are and that everything that we have is because of our own efforts and our own doing? What we want. Again, all praise and glory to me because I Right? And so as the verse says in verse 21, if we lose sight, as we lose sight of God, as we bring glory to ourselves and rejoice in our own efforts, foolish we become. The more foolish we become. Our hearts get harder, and the more we lose sight of the truth, and pride and self-rule become more important to us, the human heart has no one else to thank than ourselves. So in gratitude towards God, not giving thanks, not showing Him what credit, you know, the credit that's due to Him, is not so much a cause of evil, but it's the result of it. You see, once we have hardened our hearts to the point that we no longer see that God is the source of everything, nothing at this point is off limits. We can do whatever we want. If we don't believe that God exists, well, there's nothing controlling me. Nothing is stopping me. I can do all that I need to do so that I can bring glory to myself. Nothing is off limits. If we no longer view Him as the Lord of all creation and the King of kings and the Lord of lords in our lives, then there is nothing stopping us from living our lives in the way we choose to live it. The root sin is the failure to value God above all things so that He is not honored and praised as He should be. Right? Let me repeat that. The root sin is the failure to value God above all things in this life so that He is not honored and praised as He should be. You think about what God has done for does he not deserve all that you have? You know, does he not deserve all the thanks and gratitude that you can give to him? 
not just a little bit on Sunday, not just a little bit on Wednesday or Friday or whenever you meet on Bible Street. Every single day should be reflective of who we are and what, how grateful we are for what He has done for you.